Three weeks from now, if the polls are right, there's not going to be a single Liberal government left in mainland Australia. New South Wales Premier Dominic Perrottet is still relatively popular, but after 12 years of government scandals, the Liberal Party is looking pretty ragged and tired. Labor leader Chris Minns might not look like form and material, but his quiet, pleasant, uh, not aggressive style doesn't make him seem like a threat. And between the two of them, what's the difference really? I've got to ask on global warming, the voice, it's almost nothing. Joining me are two terrific commentators, Michael Costa, former New South Wales Labor Treasurer, and a good one, and David Gazard, former Senior Advisor to Liberal Treasurer Peter Costello, now Head of the Very Savvy Consultancy, DPG Advisory Solutions. David Gazard, thank you so much for your time. Uh, this is a debut for you. Uh, how did it get to this, that the Liberals look like losing their last mainland government? Well, I, I, I'm not quite sure I agree with you there, Andrew, um, and for a number of reasons. And, and I, I'll take you and, and Michael back. I'd be interested in his view on this because, to me, there's a lot of parallels to when I was the, the Chief of Staff to the New South Wales Opposition Leader, John Brogdon. And he, he had only just assumed the position. He was very young, 32 at the time, and he was running on the slogan, uh, a, a fresh approach. And people tended to, to like him. His <laughs> favourabilities rose. He certainly wasn't threatening in the same way that you say Chris Minns is not threatening. But at the end, people went with what they knew. They went with the experience of Bob Carr and the, the Labor government was elected for, for another term. Now, the reason I, I raise this as a, as a period of parallel is that we ran with the slogan, a fresh approach. And that essentially meant that there was nothing really that anyone understood about John. He had no equity positions. And if you tried to run a line out there, it, no one tended to believe it. And what's Chris Minns running on now? Because no one actually knows who he is. He's running on a fresh approach, which says, look, we're new, we're funky, we're going to, you know, we're going to do stuff, we've got energy and all that. But no one knows what these guys will do. And the, 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 the reason I'm telling this story is that we are living in a time where People are probably pretty cautious about what they do with their vote at the end of March. They, they've got cost of living pressures going, you know, through I the stratosphere. The they're, they're worried about where things are going. Do, do they want to take a risk to someone they don't know? So they, they weren't in 2003, and, and, and I, I think there's a case to say that they, they, they won't now. And Labor has to win, you know, what is yeah, it, 10 seats to, to go? Let me go to Michael yeah. Costa on this. My, Michael Costa, um, great to see you. Do you agree with that? No, I don't. Uh, look, um, there's, a, there's a world of difference between the period uh, David's talking about and now. Uh, Labor effectively could have been in government during the course of this term. It was just a matter of the, um, the way the um, crossbench fell. Remember, the government uh, lost its majority. Um, it's been governing as a minority government. Uh, Bob Carr wasn't a minority government. Um, in fact, he had a majority, a significant majority at that stage. Uh, Labor needs five seats to form minority government and it will have a, a favourable crossbench, I would assume, in terms of forming government. I think that's the most likely outcome. I do put a caveat on it, uh, and that is uh, I think this week's performance at the federal level did uh, cause some problems, I think, in New South Wales, because it does allow the, um, the coalition to run a campaign on taxes and, um, you know, can you believe these people and everything else. But if you actually saw today's... Um, press conference with Chris Minns, you're dealing with a different Labor leader. And you know my position on the previous Labor leaders and their fitness for government uh, over the last 12 years. We're not in that position anymore. Chris Minns um, sounded like Michael Egan today, or, or even myself, talking about the fiscal position of the state. And the fiscal position of the state is terrible at the moment, Andrew. I've often said we've got one of the most left-wing governments in this state, um, and that includes uh, comparisons with the Andrew government. But if you look at the budget position, it's appalling. Um, state debt now is up to about 18% of gross state product. When they came into government, it was around 6%. Now, before David rushes and talk about COVID, they were running deficits running into this. The only reason they weren't obvious was they did a budget fiddle um, and the Auditor General pulled them up on them. So we've got a $6 billion deficit and we've got astronomical levels of debt at a time when interest rates is going up and people questioning their projects. And Minns has made it very clear he's going to run a fiscally responsible government. He cancelled two projects uh, at some political cost to him, which were unsustainable. So I think you're dealing with a different kettle of fish here to the point where I'm actually, for the first time in 12 years, uh, comfortable if we see a Labor government. 